You probably know that X-rays and light and microwaves are all the same thing. But did you know that AT&T, Verizon, and friends just spent $100 billion reserving specific electromagnetic frequencies for their exclusive use? I once spent an entire year helping a telco buy these frequencies at an FCC auction. They call them Spectrum, and even though our team was only about 10 people, our budget was about $10 billion. If you stick around and watch this video, I'll show you why these frequencies are so expensive, and why they actually might be more expensive in the very near future. Humans have always needed to communicate at a distance. Smoke signals are thousands of years old. They were used in ancient China, ancient Rome, Lord of the Rings. In the 1600s, sailors used flags to communicate between ships. And in the 1800s, Samuel Morse invented Morse code to pass messages along telegraph lines. It wasn't until the late 1800s that Alexander Graham Bell sent the first telephone call, and in those early days, connecting to a different phone required an operator to physically connect your line to theirs. Even once those switches were automated, phone lines remained dedicated for over 100 years. Now, the Zoomers in the audience might be too young to realize this, but back in the day when you had a landline at your house, one call would take up the entire line, and if your mom was in the other room, she could just pick up the receiver and listen into your call. It was terrible. For that reason alone, we realized that we needed something better. We needed something to give us easier access to our friends and easier access to the world's information. We needed the internet. Allison, can you explain what internet is? But it's very hip to be on the internet right now. No, what, what do you think about that? Anyway? Massive computer right. network. The one that's becoming really big now. The OG internet was built straight into the phone infrastructure. It was the same lines carrying your internet and the phone calls, and you literally had to dial up in order to be connected. And still in those days, one connection would monopolize the entire line. If you were trying to load a web page, which took a very long time, and someone got a phone call in the middle of it, they would kick you off of the connection. Now, that all changed when we came up with broadband internet, which figured out multiplexing. A phone call and an internet connection are just electrical signals moving down a wire, and we figured out how to get multiple signals down the same wire at the same time. The answer was to use different frequencies. A frequency means the rate at which the peaks of an electrical wave arrive. You might know that digital data is just encoded as ones and zeros, and so wireless digital communications are easy. Each peak just has the equivalent of either a one or a zero. Higher frequency wireless spectrum can send more data per second because those peaks come faster. Unfortunately, that means it's more affected by walls and rain and trees and things, but that is the trade-off. Lower frequency waves can go right through most things, but because their waves are so long, they carry less data per second. In the case of the internet, we divided the lines like so. Below 4 kHz was voice, between 4 and 50 kHz was upstream data coming from you back to the internet, and from 50 to 1000 kHz was downstream data that you were getting from the internet to your computer. Now, this might seem confusing, because a phone line is just one line, and these are just electrical signals, so how are we sending multiple electrical signals without them all canceling out? Well, the answer is just frequency. If you're listening to a drum kit, you have no trouble identifying the difference between a bass drum and a snare and a hi-hat, and that's because those things have different frequencies that you can hear and pick out from among the noise. Now, this is possible mathematically and in a computer system by using a thing called a Fourier transform. You don't have to know what it is, but basically you have to know that it allows you to pull out individual component frequencies from one aggregate frequency that is hitting your computer. And that was the holy grail of communication at a distance. A telco could put up one tower and use it to connect many different people within one area. They would all be able to use different frequencies and communicate at the same time to the same cell tower. But there was only one problem. Everybody wanted to do this, and whenever you are using a certain frequency, nobody else can. This is the table of frequency allocations. It is a beast. It shows who has priority access to which frequencies. And it's not just for cell phone providers, but also amateur radio and radio astronomy. The real spectrum that the carriers are fighting over is just this small segment, about 2 gigahertz of low and mid-band spectrum for cellular service. The supply is constrained, there's only so much spectrum, but demand is growing almost infinitely. If you look at the data, you can see that the demand for telco services is growing about 30% every single year. If you do the math, that means that you're going to double within 3 years and 10x within 9 years. 
People always want more internet, no matter how much of it they have. You start with simple text, then you add images like in a MySpace page, but then you have YouTube, which streams video, then you have TikTok, which streams a ton of video, and in the future, we're gonna have those crazy Vision Pro goggles that are streaming every second of our lives out to the internet. So at the end of the day, that's why Spectrum is so valuable. There is a zero sum battle for a limited supply, but there is unlimited and growing demand. So it's logical to ask, where do we go from here? Now, 5G is actually part of the answer. The FCC recently allocated another five gigahertz, which is 2.5 times the total amount of spectrum for use in 4G and below for this high band, super high frequency spectrum. And because 5G is operating in these super high frequency bands, they call them millimeter wave because the wavelengths are so short. It actually allows a lot of data to flow through these channels. So we can expect to have a lot of data that can be supplied with this 5G spectrum. But even then, it will still never be enough. I'm sure it'll be good for a few years, but after a couple more years of a 30% growth rate, we'll be back right where we are now. And we'll need new ways to get people online and get them connected to high-speed, reliable internet services. Who knows, maybe we'll even look to space.